In this video, we're going to do multi-level step approval processes as well as single step approval processes. So let's just dive right in. It's going to be quick. Let's go into our settings. And in settings, we'll go to approval. Let's go approval process and we'll set it up here. I have a few already set up. So let's go ahead and delete that just for a scenario. Okay. Uh, in order to set up your approval process, you want to know exactly what um, pro approval process object you want to set it on to. So, for example, if you want to set it on accounts, you want to do on cases, right? So, leads, uh, it really depends. It's relative, right? Um, it depends what you need it for. So, for example, let's say you have a call coming in and you have to, you know, you have a breakdown of a machine or something that needs to be replaced, then let's go set it up on, let's say, cases. It needs to go into, you know, appropriate uh, management, and they're going to have to do an approval process on that. So let's go ahead and create a base on that. Uh, there's two steps. We can just go ahead and jump right in, set it all up, from, or we can go standard uh, step by step, basically. We'll go step by step. So this way, it's not uh, overwhelming. Uh, to set it up, let's go to approval. Let's call it approval, you know, let's call it approval one. Approval one. Let's go next. At this point, we're going to set up our criteria. So what is going to actually cause this to actually start the approval process, right? Um, what criteria is basically going to be needed to go ahead and uh, continue into our approval? Um, in this case, we're discussing, we're doing case freezing. I guess this is, keep in mind, this org is basically new. So I haven't really added or I did anything. So we're just kind of working as we go along. So at least you have an idea what's going to be, you know, what you can do on your side. So let's say breakdown performance for whatever reason. And we need a replacement because maybe it's not performing properly or it broke down. And let's go start the approval. Let's go next. Did I click next? Yes, no, I didn't. All right. Um, once we're in the, I guess, step three process, here's it gets a little bit, uh, you know, interesting. So basically you have an option for administrators only who can actually go ahead and edit this once it goes into approval process, or you can actually do the administration and the approver that can go ahead and edit the record. So these are two of the things they can go ahead and uh, change the record. So it's really relative. So let's say if you go, if you select on, um, approve, you know, uh, administration and approvers that can change the record, then they'll be able to change the records while they're doing the approval process. But let's say you want to do a lockdown, right? Let's say locking down the approval process and nobody has access to it except the administration. We can go ahead and leave it at that. Um, approval routing. So this is basically where you would want to route it to. Uh, and for this scenario and sake, let's just route it to a uh, manager and uh, we'll go next. This is, uh, this is the part where you would have to actually go ahead and uh, select the email template. I mean, it's not required. You can go ahead and select, you know, next. You can actually go next. But, um, you know, if you do have an email or if you don't have, a, you know, an actual template, you can go ahead and create one and then actually set it up in here. Best practice would be obviously to have a template. So go ahead and I would suggest create that before you do continue throughout the next steps. But for our scenario and sake, uh, we're just going to leave it blank. Uh, so we can just go ahead and next. Just just a quick video. Uh, at this point, we're going to have a bunch of you know fields that we can go ahead and populate for the approval process. So basically, what is, you know, the prover going to see, right? So at this point, you don't you can go ahead and select and put everything through cross. But that's going to be, you know, that's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be too much stuff. They don't need to see, you know, email, fax number, you know, website or email or anything, anything like that. They just need to see what really what the reason is, why they're, you know, what the problem is, what is the reason, what what are what would be the steps, costs, things like that, right? So those, those are just some of the scenarios that you're going to want to see. But for our simplicity's sake, we're just going to leave it at uh, case owner. Well, let's just read, well, case reason, you know, um, I guess priority, whatever. Let's just throw that in there. And there's no amounts or anything like that. So we'll just leave it. 
uh, you can have an actual visual what it would look like so you can get a good idea so if you had you know all the fields this is where it would populate uh, approval history i'll show you that shortly but this is what it would look like basically the approval history how many who's approved it you know who's pending to approve and whatnot and this would be the multi-step process which will go right into after this uh, so with that said, you want to see, let's say, approval history. So that's a good feature. We'd we'll go ahead and select that. Um, for security, basically for security, I would go ahead and leave it for recommended if you're not, if you're unsure. But uh, if you do select an option where you want them to be uh, able to do the approval process remotely, like through a wireless enable mobile device or whatever, then you can go ahead and select this, but keep in mind that uh, they won't be able to actually manually select the approval. So that's for later on options down the line. So I would go ahead and leave it as a recommended if you are really unsure, if you don't, if you don't know, then uh, just leave it as recommended. Once we go next, we have the initial submitters. Um, that would be, you know, case owner. Um, you can always change that, right? So wherever you needs to be the initial submitter, you can go ahead and change that. Um, settings, I mean, we'll leave we'll leave basically for our sake most of the stuff as blank. If you know, if you're if you're not familiar with it, just leave it as it is. Um, we can go ahead and do a recall. I'm not sure if you would want to select that. I usually I wouldn't select that unless you know there's an option. For example, uh, for something like a breakdown. You know, I don't think your customer is going to call you back and say, you know what, I changed my mind. I don't want a replacement for my product. Uh, and if they do, then, you know, it doesn't hurt to get any approval or approval anyways. But um, it just really depends on what your scenario is, what your approval process is, um, then they can use it. Maybe, you know, if you have uh, trip expenses and you put something, you forgot to put something in extra or, you know, you put something too much extra that you know won't be approved. Maybe that's something where you would go ahead and uh, set the approval process. But uh, for our scenario, we're just going to leave it blank and um, we're just going to go next and save that. So I'm going to show you a few things, but um, if we go ahead and we create it right away, uh, we can go ahead and do that. It will just save it. We'll, st we'll start the next step. But you can also go back and we can just go back to our original process. Oh, wait, no, we were supposed to go to the creation. Okay. Um, keep in mind that for the approval process, it will run as long as you have an approval step. So basically, I mean, you have the initial submission, final, uh, the final rejection and the recall, right? So what would happen in each step? I'll explain what would happen. So for example, your initial step, well, what happens when, you know, they first submit it? Well, you know, it, the record will be locked down and then we can create a task or an email or change not a field. So we can go ahead and change a field based on that submission, right? For our final approval process, once it's approved, then what do we do? Maybe we want to change the field again. Then we want to send an email alert to her, you know, to the, the owner, the case owner, or maybe start a task. Uh, final rejection, same, same criteria, same, amount, same idea as well as uh, the recall. What do we what do we want to do with the recall? But uh, either way, you can leave those blank, you know, when you actually want to activate, you, you can see that there's no activation here, but uh, we have an option to create a step. So let's just go ahead and create a step because it's a priority. So let's create it and call it step one, just simplicity. Um, in, in our case, we're going to have all the records basically going through this, but we can go, we'll go ahead and we'll set criteria as we go into multiple approval steps. But for this specific first one, we're just going to set them all. Uh, who's going to get it? We're going to send it to our manager. And uh, once it's created, so we have a few options. Once it's created, um, we can go to the steps, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, back to our, you know, back to our approval page. At this point, you will notice that uh, there's activation and there's new approval step. So just in case, for example, if you can't see the new approval step, that might be because you had an activation from before. So let's say if I activate it right now, okay, I activated it. You'll notice that it's not available anymore. We can't create another step, 
right? Even if we go back, if we try to go back, let's say, and then we go, you know, edit or anything like that, as we go along, you won't be able to actually do it. I'm, I'm just not gonna spend the time, but you won't be able to do it. Uh, so let's go back. And if you want to actually go ahead and start putting the next steps, we'll just clone it. Let's call it uh, F1 and SC. Let's call that under C. We'll call it FC for clone, for copy. All right. Now we have the new approval process step again. And if you go back, you'll notice that uh, we have the original one and we have the clone right here. So even if you deactivate, probably should have showed you that, even if we do a deactivation, right, and we go back, you still don't have the next step. So that, that that's a good thought process. Just, you know, you got to clone it. Uh, so let's go with the next step, step two. Okay, let's call it step two. Step two. Uh, for our next step, let's just do a criteria perhaps, or we can do another, you know, we can do logic, you know, certain things like uh, if criteria one or two, three and four, whatever it is, we can set it onto logic, but just to keep it as simple as we can, we're, I'm just gonna pass on the logic, but uh, keep in mind, let's say if we have, you know, two fields or something like that, um, you know, we have or could live whatever origin, right? And we have reason, and then we can go ahead and we want to make sure that both the steps are, you know, met or one or two or two or three, one and three. Uh, perhaps we want to do it like this. Perhaps you want to do uh, step two and one. We'd go ahead uh, oops, and one. We'd go ahead and uh, we'd set that criteria based on that over here. But uh, we'll go ahead. But for this next step, to we'll just keep it simple and just go. Oh, that's right. In order to um, to go next, we're gonna have to actually deselect everything. So if we deselect everything, let's just do a delete on that, and then we click again. Go ahead next. Okay. Uh, we can go ahead and create a queue. I did a basic queue. I just call it a queue. Uh, we could do approval queue. We can set it up to that for the next step. For the second step, it would be a let's say approval queue. It really depends on where you want to work with, but this is just a basic example, right? Just get basically giving an idea of what you can do with the steps. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back to our uh, page, and uh, you know what? Let's do another one. Let's do uh, step three. Step step three. Oops. Step three. And um, at this point, let's say case reason, because we've been clicking on that for a while, uh, equals to breakdown. Let's go next. Uh, we can do automatically approved signers, right, uh, from the list. So basically, let's say we have a bunch of users. I can add myself. I, I You notice I don't have any other users, but let's say we have a user. We want to, maybe we want to add, um, you know, case owner, well, not really, but uh, let's say we want to do a pro, like a queue, queue of members, right? So we could go ahead and do that. Uh, we can add it together. Uh, the other option, the reason I selected this as my third step is this way you can actually have a kind of an idea where you can have, you know, the users or the approvers anonymously, basically they have to select approved. Or we can set it to, you know, reject it based on the first, re you know, response. So it's really the relative what kind of a scenario you're going through. But uh, for any reason, let's say you have a three three managers or management team, right, that, uh, you know, you need to get their approvals. And um, going anonymously might be a scenario where you want to select that. So not nobody will really know who did it or who rejected or who approved it. But... Um, the process will still go through. So that would be a nice scenario to go with. Um, behavior based on rejection. So since we have three steps, let's say, um, I mean, you know, if, if we do a final rejection, then it'll just be finally rejected. But let's say if, you know, for every reason there was a rejection, we can just go back to the first step. So just for this scenario, we can go ahead and select, you know, go back to the first step if there's a rejection. So that would be a neat option. All right. so it, it's all relative basically on uh, the business logic that you have. 
uh, once we're done, then afterwards, basically, we will go ahead and select the kind of actions we want, right? So this would be an action. So once it goes through the approval, we can similar to initials and final. So let's say tasks, emails, whatever the scenario would be, basically, when um, let's say when this person actually goes in and approves it, we can go ahead and send an email alert right to the case owner and then uh, say this person approved it. Right, or we can do a field update based on whatever scenario would be. Um, and if it was rejected, then again, we can go ahead and set that up. If we have any tasks that we've created in the past, uh, we could go ahead and set those up as well, but uh, I don't have anything currently running actually as for my tasks. Um, but once the process is complete, uh, you can still see the new approval process. We can go ahead and add more and more things to it. But at this point, let's say I want to do an activation. If I do an activation, again, this will disappear. Uh, once we do edit, let's say we want to do an edit. So we can change this basically from uh, lock to unlock if we want to, right? So those are some of, the, some of the key options that we can go ahead and work with. So hopefully that kind of helps you out, gives you an idea. If you have any questions, these are just basic short videos just to give you a heads up of where and how things are done. Um, but uh, if you want anything more in detail, just feel free, reach out to me at the, you know, the message below. Um, cheers.